If you're a sports filmmaker, you may find yourself in situations where you need to film either in or around the water. Despite the obvious difficulties of mixing water and camera equipment, the ability to get a camera in and around the water when you're filming swimming or other water sports can really make a huge difference to the final quality of your film. For this video, we're going to assume that you've got a tight budget and don't necessarily have the ability to hire in a specialist water camera operator, and also assume that you don't want to invest in the bigger waterproof housing for cinema cameras. You might not want to invest that money in something that you might only use once, and also you might not want to risk putting your own expensive cinema camera in the water. And before we get started, we've got to mention that when you're filming around water, that brings obvious risk and danger, so make sure you're operating in a way that keeps yourselves, the crew, the talent, anyone else nearby on set, keeps them as safe as possible, so make sure you do your risk assessment, think ahead, and plan and prepare accordingly to make sure you're prioritising everyone's health and safety. So here are some of the methods and equipment we've used in the past to film underwater when we're on a budget. Firstly, GoPro is the classic action camera. Now these are very cheap to rent and GoPro also offer a range of models, ranging from cheaper GoPros to more expensive ones, and this is really useful if you're looking to work to a certain budget. Before you buy or rent a GoPro, just make sure to check its model number to see how waterproof it is. The new and more modern GoPros are waterproof straight out the box. Some of the older ones you'll need to either buy or rent the waterproof housing for it. And even if you're using a more modern GoPro, it can be well worth investing in the waterproof housing just to look after the longevity of your camera. And it's worth mentioning here, if you're filming in an outdoor scenario, somewhere like a lake or the sea, it's definitely worth investing in the GoPro float attachment. It's a bright orange float that attaches to the back of the GoPro, and that means that if for any reason you lose the camera or it drops off, it's gonna float and hopefully be easy to recover. If you're in somewhere like a swimming pool, the float might not be quite as important, but it's definitely worth investing in to make sure that you don't lose your footage if you're somewhere where the GoPro is gonna be hard to get back. The first technique that we've used to film underwater is simply using the GoPro handheld. You can put your hand in the water and if you're about a metre or two metres away from your subject, you can often get some really great shots. If you're using one of the more modern GoPros, make sure you've got the hypersmooth stabilisation turned on. As some of the older GoPros, you can kind of get a bit of a shaky cam when you're dragging your hand through the water. If you're filming in somewhere like a lake or a river, be aware that if your subject gets more than a metre away, sometimes you'll lose them completely in the shot because the water's too murky. If you're in a swimming pool, this is less of an issue, but it's always better if using handheld to get the GoPro as close as you can to your subject. If you need to get closer to your subject than just filming handheld, the second option is to use a pole. GoPro and other manufacturers now sell dedicated poles with GoPro mounts on. Many of these are often telescopic, so that really helps you get closer to your subject. If you're looking for a more affordable option, I'd hugely recommend the GoPro handlebar mount. This is a fantastic, inexpensive, and highly versatile mount. I think this is by far my favorite GoPro mount. The handlebar lets you mount to bike handlebars, but also anything that's sort of similar diameter and similar shape to a bike handlebar. The GoPro handlebar mount is by far my favorite GoPro mount. It's hugely versatile. In a water sport setting, we've used it to, again, attach the poles to drag in the water, but we'll also put it on the boom when we go windsurfing for a really cool angle. We'll put it on kayak paddles, and just in wider filming scenarios, it really comes in handy. It saved the day when I was filming at Chelsea FC in the football ground, mounting a GoPro to the camera gantry back in the day. It's just a hugely versatile mount and definitely one that's worth having in your kit bag. If you don't want to invest in one of the dedicated GoPro poles, go down to your local hardware store, look for a broom handle, a telescopic washing line, and just make sure it's gonna fit the diameter of your handlebar mount, and that can be a fantastic option for getting some water shots really affordably. With your GoPro mounted on the pole, either with a dedicated pole or the handlebar mount, you get a lot more range to get closer to your subject from, say, the side of a lake or side of a swimming pool. Make sure when you're dragging it through the water, you hold the pole steady, as sometimes the drag resistance on the water can cause the camera to shake. Sadly, I found that the water in the past often renders the Wi-Fi transmission on the GoPro out of action, so you can't monitor your shots. So make sure you put some extra thought and composition into your shot to make sure you're framing your subject correctly. If you've used GoPros a lot in the past, you're probably familiar with where you need to point the GoPro to get the best shot. It's worth setting it here to the widest setting option so you've got some leeway to play with in post, and also setting it to the higher resolution so you can crop in just slightly if you need to. But make sure to really think about your composition and think how you're framing and moving the GoPro to get your subject in frame how you want them. Thirdly and finally, if you're using a GoPro in the water, you might have seen that very popular effect where the water line cuts halfway across the screen and captures half of the, the scene above the water and half the scene below the water. If you're looking to achieve the classic effect where you capture half of the scene above the water and half of the scene below, you're gonna to need to invest in a dome. And they just create that look that you can't get with a GoPro itself. A GoPro on its own, you'll get water droplets and it's a really odd transition when you go from above to below. So if you want this effect, invest in a dome. GoPros are fantastic, but they do have their limitations. And so you might want to try and use your bigger cinema cameras to get some shots underwater. Something I wasn't previously aware of in my career is that swimming pools often have underwater filming and photography galleries where you can head down and take your bigger cameras. You will have to film through glass, but it's a great opportunity to obviously use different lenses, different focal lengths, and just get a more varied footage than you would if you were using a GoPro. 
Now we're aware in this video, we're talking about filming underwater on a budget. So you might have the budget to move your location to one of these more expensive swimming pools that does have an underwater filming gallery. It's well worth asking though, I filmed at a swimming pool location three or four times and it wasn't until the third time that someone told me that there was one of these underwater galleries. They're not always signposted or advertised. So do a bit of pre-production beforehand, ring up the venue and ask, hey, do you have one of these galleries? And you might be surprised by the answer. Also, if it's an elite swimming pool, sometimes they have their own dedicated cameras to film underwater to capture technique. You may or may not be able to use the footage from these cameras, but again, it's worth an ask to see if you can use them. Even if it's just to get a short shot of a tumble turn at the end of a swimming pool, it can be a really useful clip to have to put in your final edit. Thirdly, one of my favorite techniques, the classic fish tank. Now this is great for getting underwater shots without needing to buy expensive waterproof housing for some of the bigger cameras. Full disclaimer here, you are putting your camera at some risk, so consider what camera you're using and consider the consequences of what might happen if there's some water damage. Fish tanks are relatively inexpensive, but you do wanna make sure you're buying one with good build quality though, as obviously you don't want any leaks of water coming through. When I'm using this technique, I'll put a towel, maybe two towels in the bottom of the fish tank to rest the camera on. And then with the camera positioned, put the lens right up against the glass and just by very gently submerging and tilting the front of the fish tank, making sure that obviously the water line doesn't come over the fish tank, you can put the lens underwater and get that underwater shot without having to completely submerge the fish tank or the camera. It may not replicate the half submerged look quite as well as a dome does, but personally, I quite like the look it gives. The fish tank can give quite a stylized look. In this setup, we've got some streaking and a bit of blurring. Personally, I really like the look it gave for this piece, but make sure to check with either your director or your client, whoever you're working with, watch the footage back, make sure everyone's happy with the look before you get too engrossed and film too much of it. Like most underwater filming, the fish tank works best in a controlled swimming pool. You're gonna to wanna to make sure firstly, you're never using it where the water's even a little bit rough, where there's the smallest waves or wind or anything like that. You're gonna make sure you can control the environment, nice smooth calm water, and you're not putting the camera at any unnecessary risk. To conclude, in my experience, underwater shots are best used sparingly to complement the majority of footage that's filmed on cameras above the water. There's lots of techniques that you can use to make a subject look really dynamic and interesting when you're filming them in the water, but you're above the water. But having a handful of underwater shots to use in your edit can really help boost the production value of your overall video.